Chapter 2 Shonda Shonda chewed on the inside of her lip as she checked her watch again. Deacon had texted her an hour ago with his ETA, and it should have been five minutes ago, but he was late. And the deacon she remembered had never been late. She supposed he could have changed in that time, or... No, she wouldn't let herself think that. There could be no way they'd found out about Deacon. She'd been careful. She hadn't called from her house in case it was bugged, and she'd gone across town to use her cell in case they were monitoring anything close to her house. So unless they'd bugged her cell phone... She pulled it from her pocket and tossed it onto the couch as if it had burned her. Surely not, but it would explain things. She'd have to get a new phone tomorrow. Her eyes dropped to her watch again, ten minutes late now. Without thinking about it, she began pacing across the floor. Dante would be home in a few hours, and Deacon couldn't be here when he got home. She would have to explain eventually... But it was too much for today, for right now. Right now, she needed Deacon focused on helping her before she really did go crazy. A black truck slowed as it approached her house, and then it pulled into the driveway. It wasn't what he'd driven when they'd been together, but it had to be Deacon. Still, she couldn't take any chances. Though she didn't own a gun, she'd found a baseball bat in the garage, and now it sat by the front door. Dante either hadn't noticed or hadn't cared, which was fine with Shonda. Explaining why she felt the need to keep a bat by the front door would be hard. She picked up the bat, enjoying the solid feel of its weight. Though she didn't know if she'd ever actually be able to use it if push came to shove, She liked the way it made her feel safer. Lifting on her toes, she peeked through the peephole of the front door. The door of the truck opened, and a man stepped out. He was bigger than she remembered, a wall of solid muscle. But she imagined his demanding job played a large role in that. His face, however, was exactly as she remembered, and she quickly opened the door to usher him in. His gaze washed over her, his eyes widening when he spotted her weapon. Shonda, what's going on? Why do you have a bat? She shook her head, ignoring his questions, and motioned for him to come inside. Then she shut the door, put a finger to her lips in a shushing motion, and indicated for him to follow her. With no idea if the place was bugged or not, the only thing she could think to do was take him to her room and turn on the music loudly. Then they could talk quietly and not be heard. She realized she hadn't thought the plan through entirely when he followed her into her bedroom and she was hit with memories of the past. How many times had they shared a bed together? Of course, this time would be different. This time, it would only be so they could hear each other. But it didn't stop her heart from aching a little at the memory. Grabbing the remote, she turned the music on and sat on the bed, patting the seat next to her for Deacon. He looked at her as if she was crazy. Maybe she was. But he sat and then leaned close. What's with the loud music? I don't know if the house is bugged. I don't want them to hear us. Bugged? What exactly are we dealing with, Shonda? She pressed her lips together and shook her head. She'd asked herself the same question several times in the last few weeks, and she still didn't have the answer. I don't know, but someone powerful. Can't we just go outside? I think they listen outside, too. I'm just not sure how far. Well, my truck's not bugged. Come on, we'll drive somewhere and then talk in the truck. I can't think with the music this loud. Of course. Why hadn't she thought of that? Probably because she hadn't slept well the last few weeks. She was running on adrenaline, the need to keep Dante safe and a prayer. With a nod, she followed him back down the stairs, not bothering to turn off the music. 
hopefully they would think she was still in the house. She followed Deacon out the front door, locking it behind her and glancing at her watch as she did. They should still have time before Dante returned home. She'd just have to be careful to watch the time. A sudden breeze whipped around her and she tucked her chin down low, burying it in the collar of her jacket to keep from shivering. Deacon opened the door for her and helped her inside, and the smell of him hit her like a wall. It was strong in his truck, and it was the same scent that haunted her dreams, the same scent he wore eight years ago. He'd changed, but not everything. He shut her door and then climbed in the driver's side, still saying nothing. Then he pulled out and headed toward downtown. She wanted to ask him where he was going, but she wasn't sure it was safe yet. However, when he pulled into the parking lot of the police station, she shook her head. Not here. Let's go to our spot. She wasn't sure he would remember, but after a moment he nodded and headed toward the park they used to hang out at. It had been so long since she'd been there that she was pretty sure whomever was after her wouldn't know about it. Deacon parked and turned off the engine before shifting in his seat to face her. Okay, now spill. Shonda took a few deep breaths as she tried to put the words she wanted to say in order in her head. A few weeks ago, I saw what I think was a fentanyl exchange. I reported it to the police, but I guess whoever I saw is related to someone very important. They assured me I'd seen it wrong, but I knew I was right, so I didn't let up. Unfortunately, they decided to use my conviction against me and claim that I was having mental health issues. My job ordered me to visit a therapist, and while I didn't need one, I figured it couldn't hurt to tell more people. But then things started happening. Deacon appeared to be listening intently, his face stoic and his eyes fixed on her. What kind of things? he asked. His truck was big, but he made the space seem small and yet somehow safe. At first, it was little things like my keys not being in the place I normally put them or light switches being on that I was sure I turned off. Then I started having blank spots in my memory. Like every once in a while, it would just be black as if whatever had been there was gone. Did you tell your therapist? Shonda nodded and chewed on her bottom lip. I did with the first stuff, the forgetful pieces, but then I started to get a weird feeling about the way he reacted, so I haven't shared anything else. What do you mean? How did he react? Shonda paused as she tried to think of exactly how to explain it. It was more of a feeling, really. When I told him about the keys and lights, he seemed too interested, almost excited. But that's crazy, right? Deacon rubbed a hand across his chin. Do you have reason to mistrust him? You mean other than his weird interest? Yeah, a few. The first being that nothing happened until I started seeing him. Lines of confusion wrinkled Deacon's brow. So why don't you just quit seeing him and find another therapist if your job insists on it? That's reason number two, she said with a sigh. When I went to my HR rep and told them I'd like to see a new therapist, they told me he was the only one approved to handle my case. Okay, that does sound fishy, Deacon said slowly. Right? I mean, perhaps she meant that he was the only one the company contracts with, but we're a decent-sized hospital. I find it hard to believe we only contract with one therapist. Deacon tilted his head and studied her. You work at a hospital, so you finished nursing school? Shonda pressed her lips together, wondering how much of her life she should share. But he would find out eventually. If she really wanted his help, she'd have to be honest with him. I did. His lips pulled into a soft smile. I can see that. 
You were always so driven and caring. ER? Um, no. Pediatrics. She had no idea how he would respond to that and forced herself not to share more. His expression shifted. Pediatrics? Isn't that hard after... He let the words trail off, but she knew what he meant. She should tell him now. It was the perfect opportunity and he deserved to know. But the words wouldn't come. Instead, she shook her head. It's not that hard. I love kids. He shifted his eyes away from her then and stared out the windshield for a moment. You always did. Then he sighed and turned back to her. So why am I here? What exactly do you think I can do? Ah, uh, yes. That was the same question she'd been asking herself since she called him. Why had she called him, of all people? But she knew the answer to the question, even if she wasn't ready to say it out loud. I don't know exactly. I needed to talk to someone I could trust. And even though it's been years, I still trust you. I'm not sure who to trust here because I think at least some people in the police department are trying to cover this up. Beyond that, I guess I was hoping that maybe you could help me investigate or at least give me advice about what to do. I'm not a cop anymore, Shonda. I know, but you were. So you have a better idea of how to handle this than I do. Look, I just feel like I'm going crazy. Like they're trying to make me go crazy. But I don't know how to prove it. I can't just sit back and wait for it to get worse. What if they come after me? Will you help me? It was a lot to ask. Not only did she not know exactly what she needed, but it had been years since they'd been close. Years of separation and a shared heartache was hard to overcome. Deacon stared at her, and she could almost see the wheels turning in his head. I don't have any jurisdiction here, so I can't investigate the crime you saw, but I might still have some friends on the force. Maybe I can meet with them and find out what they know. As for the therapist, that does give me pause. Perhaps I can come with you to an appointment and meet him and see where to go from there? It was more than Shonda had hoped for, and she resisted the urge to throw her arms around him, settling instead for placing her hand on his arm. Thank you, Deacon. His gaze dropped to her hand and heat erupted under her fingertips. Don't thank me yet. I haven't done anything. She returned her hand to her lap and nodded. But he was wrong. He'd already done so much for her. He just didn't know it yet.